All right, let's get this show on the road, everyone. Um, I just do want to, before we get started, I want to go into a few things from last stream. Um, I think I had some major troubles with like um, drivers last stream. And it turns out, uh, on Ubuntu at least, um, you have to install extra kernel modules. Uh, so if we search up modules extra, um, you can see we have Linux modules extra and you need to install those or um, you won't get drivers, which is great. Um, all right. Let's start by launching DOSBox. All right. Um, it's been a while. Uh, I've been doing stuff. Can't talk about it. Um, I, I can talk about it. I just won't talk about it. Anyway, um, let's open up code, bot, and here we got our files here. Um, so we were working on the parser last time and we have here some stuff. So we were working on passing a message. If we go back to the to do file, which should be here. Yep. Um, we have the syntax here. We have message which has the tags and the prefix and commands and params and CRLF and stuff like that. Um, and I just started writing it um, in assembly like that. My keyboard is not level. Why does my desk have to not be level ever? Maybe I should just buy a new desk. My trestle table desk is just not level. Is there like a life hack for this? Because I've just been putting pieces of paper under my keyboard uh, so it doesn't wobble. Um, but why have I got an E there? Oh, probably from yesterday. Sometimes you just have Unicode region E. All right. No, the keyboard still isn't level. It's not level. Why? I promised myself I wouldn't get agitated. All right, I moved the keyboard and I will move myself. But it's not ergonomic. The exact place where I need it to be ergonomically is the place where it's wobbling. Okay. The laws of mathematics says that to fix a wobble, you need to put it under a corner, right? Adding it under that corner causes more wobble. More wobble on that one. Even more on that one. That might do. Okay, so we have our pass message. I don't know why it's pushing all these variables, I guess because of the calling convention. That makes sense. Um, so the first thing we have is pass prefix. And the, so what are we doing when we pass things? Um, we're passing them into arrays there. which is cool, I guess. Um, I'm not that happy with this code, to be honest. What the hell is auth end for doing there? Post sauerkraut bliss, have you finally found the thing you enjoy making? So we have pass prefix, we have is prefix, and then we have move word prefix length zero if it's not a prefix and then we return. 
and so prefix is optional. So we might just want to rewrite this a bit, just hypothetically. Um, Because I think I want to throw away most of this code. In fact, let's kind of do that. Um, we have pass message. I don't know why it has jump if the length is zero. I, I guess that makes sense. Um, if the length isn't zero, then uh, we have AX, DX. All right, so we need a calling convention for our parser. <coughs> Let's just write it in the parser file. So we need a calling convention. Um, prefix. We'll worry about a prefix later. Um, Let's just try and focus on the basics here. So what does our parser actually do? Um, it doesn't build a data structure. It just copies characters around um, to be specific bytes. And that's good. So there should be uh, slurs against us bots. Why? There's such a how would that even be a slur if it's only against DOS bots? There's only one DOS bot. So. What we're going to do is write this as pass.back. And we're going to just uh, delete all this junk. And we're going to start over. So we actually do have a global, which is pass message. So from a high level, what pass message is supposed to do is take in a string and we want to fill up the following values. Um, we want to fill up tags. What is tags? I guess that's just the tags, tags, uh, following strings, tags, um, prefix, uh, prefix, which was prefix can either be a server name or a Nick. Um, hmm. So that's already a bit of a, a trouble there. Um, how about we just say server name or Nick prefix server name, or we can just do prefix type prefix, uh, and that will be, um, zero for server name, one for Nick, and we'll just include the host and whatever in the Nick. Or Nick host. Uh, so we have Nick or user at host. That's the kind of stuff there. Tags is just comma delimited, I think. Um, let's search that up real quick. Twitch tags. This is just to give us a little bit of an idea which tags. What? So it looks just like at, and then you have a list of them. That's okay. So tags, A, B, C, D. All right. So we have prefix type. No one uses IRC anymore. That's fine. Um, what else do we need? The command. 
the parameters. So we have the command, um, and a prove message. And then we have um, multiple parameters, which will be uh, param one, param two, param three, param four, etc. We'll have four parameters. No one uses more than four. So how are we going to pass this? Well, let's start breaking this down. We're going to want to write something like um, call, pass tags, call, pass prefix, call, pass command, or pass params. Um, Ram one, ram two, ram three, ram four. Right, yeah, that is a bit sad, I guess. Maybe. Um, so some of these are optional. So optional, optional. Um, Param one, two, three. Are the params optional? Screw it, they're optional. Optional. And then say when we have a pass tags, uh, we would call pass, what would it be? Um, pass at, then this would be also, um, if not, so pass at, that would be optional. If not set, if not passed, we would do I know, return optional. We have this idea of optional and that really just means pass fail, doesn't it? Um, but we, we only care if it fails or not a bit earlier. Um, yeah, so we have the idea of um, pass failed. And we're going to have to define this as a based on look ahead, which is the next byte or current byte. Um, and we also have, okay, so we have two kind of fundamental pass things. We have peak and we have read and they both look at the pass buffer. So I guess we have a pass buffer and peak tells you if it has a value and read just reads the value into the buffer regardless. So those are the two options. Um, so you pass tags, um, call pass spaces. And then it will get to the next thing that's not spaces and it will return maybe. So we're kind of sketching this, this out, um, global pass message. So the idea is that we're trying to make things a little bit high level. So, um, to do calling convention and then we will return and our buffers and stuff will be set. Um, pass tags, um, call, Pass. What do we have to set? So with the read buffer, we also have to set a read buffer 
which will probably be like pram one or whatever. So um, password, we're just gonna call that word. And we're going to do set read buffer, unset read buffer or something like that. So we have the pass buffer um, and we have the read buffer and we have the peak buffer, which peaks from the pass and we have the read, which copies it. And then we want to set them when we're passing things. Um, pass spaces is more like peak spaces. Well, it passes, but that doesn't read, doesn't it? So that just peaks it. So maybe we should just Uh, what's the difference? Um, passing, we have two types of passing. We have passing that reads and passing that writes, read writes. Hmm. So when we go to pass messages, we call these high level things. Um, but we also want to, um, fail if these don't, if some of these don't work. Um, so let's talk about calling convention. Calling convention, we need to pass the pass buffer, the read buffer. Um, so in, in, and then we need to give out the new place in the pass buffer, maybe. New place in the read buffer. And uh, also whether we failed. And then we want to kind of have a return if failed. Call return if failed. Or something return if failed. So that would be our pass message. Um, so pass tags. Um, hmm. We need to be able to read a single character. Uh, okay. So it looks like, hmm. We need to be able to read character to register, um, copy character to memory to, um, to read buffer, rename that as output buffer. I guess we would call this peak read um, without incrementing pass buffer. So that would be peak, <laughs> this would be consume, and this would be copy, I guess. So we have those three kind of things there at the calling convention. Um, let's name this as operations. So operations, we also need a out whether we failed. We also need, um, yeah, it looks like we have return if failed, but let's Um, let's figure this out. We could use macros to clean this up a bit. So when we do a pass tags here, it's only going to peak and it won't um, affect our buffers or whatever. So read pass tags will only read as much as it needs to. All of these will read. Um, Uh, only consume data on successful pass. Now, how do we know what's the successful pass? Well, we're going to say, we're going to have a look ahead of one. And then we can decide if this pass is gonna be successful or not. I know that sounds a bit weird, but for instance, we have pass out here. Um, this so would probably be maybe call peak. Or 
or maybe expect. We would call expect. And we do remove AX and we put the the at there. Um, so we have expect higher level ops. Oh, let's not worry about that. Expect expect um, each character and returns if matches. So that makes kind of sense. So we would expect that. And we would do return if failed. Then we would set the read buffer to tags buffer. Uh, password would return the length as well. So these operations also return some other um, data too. And also take some kind of, um, I guess, some kind of character or something. Hmm. They take an read buffer. Uh, this is a bit tricky. So we would call expect with that. We would return. We would set the read buffer to tags buffer. Then we would unset it. How'd that work? I guess we would push the current read register. The read buffer register. And then we would pop it here. And then we would pass spaces. This would more be like, um, cause pass spaces doesn't, doesn't actually cons uh, write things. So pass tags. Yeah, we should probably put, um, expect spaces here. Expect spaces, expect spaces, expect spaces. Um, no, we won't do that. We will put the spaces after each of them. Maybe? We're not reading it, are we? Uh, we have expect spaces, which picks a character and returns. So this is not, um, hmm. so password reads the buffer. Could we get around this by discarding characters if read buffer is null? Mm, that sounds like a bit of a hack, but let's not worry about that too much. Um, so we would have expect spaces, or we'd call this expect car. Uh, we would call this expect white space. We shouldn't have this called expect, should we? We should just call this peak. No, expect is a comparison, isn't it? Expect car, expect spaces. Uh, we'll call this expect white space. Um, so we would do that. We would set the read buffer. Um, that expect to at. So that would pass the tags. What else would we have? Um, for passing prefix, it would be the same thing. Kind of. Passing prefix would, um, it would set the type, well, we don't know. We can't really tell what the type is from this, can we? Um, so let's not bother with that prefix. We actually have kind of, have kind of a common pattern here. Um, okay, then we have the command and that wouldn't do anything interesting either, would it? All right, so we kind of have an, an idea of what we have going here. So we have the read buffer and pass buffer. Um, we have the pass buffer and read buffer get modified. Um, we also set whether we've failed. 
Um, we also want to, I guess, sometimes we want to actually just read the value, like peak needs to um, red character. And in, we're going to have expected character. Uh, let's remove that and not worry about it. So this is kind of our parser API at the moment and we need to assign registers. Now we can actually just change these to in out and in out expected character or red character. So that's three registers we need. And then we can use this as zero register or something, which would mean, is there a return if a conditional return in x86? I vaguely remember there being one. Let's check the assembly language guide. So return, please. Don't tell me this is just one big image. Come on. Come on. Please. What about ret? No, not there. Okay, let's use our eyes. There's ret. I thought there was ret z or something. I don't know. There's jump z. There's rep z. Maybe I was thinking of a jump x z. Um, ret, R E T, control transfer, call, jump, ret. Um, we would use jump here, but we would have to push where to return. Um, actually, kind of interesting. We would be able to use jump fairly easily if we had a link register in AD86 in different architectures, like I believe ARM has a link register and this is just the kind of return value um, that gives you the return address. And then I think you're sp the, the callee is supposed to store that on the stack. So instead of using call, you use, just use jump. Let's just see, uh, let's have a quick peek. I think risk V, does risk V have a call instruction? Come on, let me, okay, whatever. Risk V call instruction. Let's see, we have that. I think we have a link register. Return address for jumps. Yes, yeah, so that's X1. And I think we have a pseudo thing called call. Call, function calls. So these are pseudo instructions. And we have call. They also have tail. They have a tail pseudo instruction. Oh my God, I'm gonna pour this hot tea over myself. They have a tail instruction, I'm so happy. I'm gonna cry. Um, but no, we, these, we have these pseudo instructions. Um, RA, they have a tail, hey pajama bee. RA is used to save the link. Uh, ah. Okay, um, that was actually really weird. I'm never gonna make that again. So what does call do? So call moves function one into RA, and then it jumps there. Yeah. So jump um, with link register, I think. I think that's what it's called. J J A L R. I don't know. Jaller. Jump and link register. Yeah. So. 
having an actual call instruction is kind of weird. Um, newer architectures, yeah, they use branch and link instead. Um, and that's so much better. I love it. It makes me want to break down crying like Jordan, Pe Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but it seems we are cursed with x86 here, where the only way to call and preserve that value, um, is using a 11 clock call instruction, which is fine. And return to call. And there's jump on zero. We have some jumps. We have loops. It doesn't look like we have a uh, return on zero. Uh, how much Jordan Peterson have I watched? I watched a three hour video about him. I don't know. Part of me just loves it. I think more people need to cry in the world. Yeah, I am serious. Why would I not want to watch a three hour video about? Yeah, it was by... Um, more news or something. And it was just basically a three hour, you know, they, they showed me Jordan Peterson and he is whack, but I love it. But I also don't love it. Um, so x86 conditional return. Should you watch it? Ah, I don't know. Oh, cool. People actually want this. People want a conditional return. Don't you miss a conditional return? No. And they link to this. Why? Oh, arm um, has conditional return. <laughs> Having a breakdown over a kid using the eat in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. Rep Z Ret? Can you do that? Okay, no, you can't. So every time. Yeah, so x86 does not have conditional returning. That's fine. Um, so you can emulate them by pushing a return address and then jumping. Yeah, you can do that. Um, but what we will do instead is simple. We will have a section called dot ret <laughs> and we will do, um, I know jump zero return. That's probably horrible, but it's okay. Um, do we have a jump zero? I think we have a jump zero. So we will say that the failure is the zero register. The in register is the pass buffer. Out, in, out, pass, in, out, read. Um, we have expected or read. Someone wants to make it better, they can deal with it. Yeah. So we also need to do some register assignment. Um, 8086 has a lot of registers. Um, if we go down here, we have SI and DI. So of course we're going to use these. So SI is the pass buffer and DI is the read buffer. Um, and in out, 
What will that be? I guess we could just have it as AX. Maybe. There. So I think that's all we need for our parser. So we do in out uh, peak will basically um, read to register read car to AX no SI increment uh, read will read and increment SI. Um, so these are our core operations here. Um, then we have our higher level ops. Um, which will be um, expect, I guess. So our parser is going to work with characters at a time. So we're not going to specify that. So um, expect um, compares against AX, compares peak against AX sets Z flag. Yeah, we can actually put that in there since that sets flags. And then higher level ops, no. Read character to register. Consume. Now that is read. Read is consume. Copy. Copy is copy character to read buffer. Yeah. Um, you know, these are all pretty low level. High level is when we don't um, operate on characters. So a password, that says it will return the length. So we might have to, hmm. Should we repurpose AX for this or set CX to the length? Because after we pass word, we would do password, we would do move, um, move DI tags buffer. Um, we do like push DI and pop DI, something like that. Move AX at, call expect. Then we would jump to return if that fails. And we would push DI, we would move DI to the tags buffer. Um, and then we would call password. Um, then we would move AX to, we would move, um, tags buffer length to password, uh, to AX, I think. Um, however, we also need to, okay, we're actually going to repurpose CX as max length to read length read. So we would do this, move CX tags about the length. Um, then we would move, um, length max, we move CX back there, and we would pop DI. Um, so that seems fine. Then expect white space, that password should be read word, uh, or a copy word? Yeah, copy word. Hmm. Copy word. 
We should probably change, no, um, password maybe? Yeah, let's just call it pass. So copy, we're actually gonna call pass. And move tags buffer link CX, pop DI. Then we call expect white space. It turns length. Of word. Max length returns length of word. Should we set a, we'll probably set Z if overflow. And we will jump Z return then. But does move set the Z thing? We do the password. Does move set Z? Does pop set Z? Probably not. That should be fine. Um, expect white space. And that would just pass through the error. And we do have an issue here, kind of. Um, Z should be failed. But we also have a... We also should be kind of dropping out if any of these fail. Like that. Does that make sense? But expect does not fail. Um, perhaps expect could set another flag. Um, hmm. Because this isn't a failure, this is just a conditional. By the way, once we set all this up, I think I might just write some macros to make this look a bit better. Anyway. So. Hmm. Probably you also should have a test for this, right? Oh no, we can test this by, uh, no, we're going to write unit tests for this. Why not? All right, so pass message. We'll take in, I guess AX will be, no, it will, shall we use globals for the buffer? No, AX is going to be, I'm not sure. Should we use a struct for that or something? Anyway, this looks like we're kind of getting there. So put some comments here. So I think we're going to have to write some tests because um, writing this without tests is going to be hell. Okay. So how are we going to do that? 
wmake test. Make test.exe. All right, here's where things get a bit tricky. Um, let's go down to desktop, bot, drive C, code, make file. Let's open this up. Does it have the test still? Test.exe. So that should be wmake test.exe. Oh, it does. So we run test and we're going to add a new test called uh, pass. So let's go to test. Um, I guess this is just called test IO. Um, whatever. Test equals pass. You know, let's just make a new, a new program for that. Um, test pass. And we're going to remove all the socket stuff. Remove all this junk. Probably should include the standard library. And let's do a printf hello there world. I need to stop typing that like I'm in Vim. So let's do Vim make file. Um, we're gonna copy this test objects. This should be test IO. Um, test pass objects. Test pass the object. Ooh, is that gonna go over the, the character limit? Mm. There we go. DOS has an eight character limit for your file names. So it's just going to be test pass. Yeah, you can only have eight characters in your file name. You know, that's just the DOS way of uh, doing things. Yeah, that should be fine. So let's try to W make. Nice, 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 nice. All right, just comment everything out, fuck it. Undefined symbol. Uh, pass message prefix prefix links. Um, let's just comment those out. Pass message is that going to idle state? What the fuck is this? Return CX reuses line buffer. I guess we'll just comment that out. Let's see if test pause runs. Um, it does not run. It uh, links with all the test stuff. Let's try this. Yeah. So let's do wmake. Test pause object not found. Oh, 
All right. So the first thing we're going to do is write some quick tests. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I couldn't find the mute button in time. Where is the mute button? There it is, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh. So the first thing we need to do What did Whatcom just warn me about? I didn't use the parameters. Um, I guess we can just do int main void then. All right, so. We are going to need to um, be able to test using this calling convention. which means writing a foreign function thing to assembly, which is fine. So what we're going to do is try and find a way to um, shit. C can't have multiple return values. Um, this is fine. We could just write a wrapper, I guess. But it would be good to try and mash this into a struct somehow. I guess there's a, I guess there's the struct registers. We could try that. So let's find our test code. Um, struct pass. Parser data, I guess. I think we need to type def struct parser data. No, just struct. Um, so we're going to have our uh, we're going to have our character C um, int length. I think that should be short. I don't know. Character C, we have int length and we're going to have our character pass buffer and character read buffer. And so when we call, um, we're gonna make something that um, if we do void call um, pass function and we're going to take in a struct um, pass of data and we're going to give out a struct pass of data um, mm -mm, mm -mm. Probably should. Mm. We'll take that as a pointer instead. And, oh shit. We'll have to return um, whether we failed or not, which is a zero register. And we need to provide a symbol We need to provide a symbol for the function that we're going to run, which is going to be 
I'm not sure. This function needs to just call it and set the pass data to um, registers. Actually, I think Whatcom has a way to just um, give us the registers. Int pack? No. Oh, so we can define a calling convention or something? Is this what we want? Describing calling convol, calling convention, pragma aux sim, bar near, all right. What? So we can set register sets. I'm not sure how this takes a struct. Turning function values. This is kind of painful. Returning structures. All right, we just want to Yeah, I don't think we're going to use those. We just want to. Is there a register struct? What com register struct? Oh, fuck it. We'll just use inline assembly. Is someone going to tell me how to use it? Look, they have registers here. Why don't we just use that? Jeez. Union reg R. Um, let's see. Um, union regs. Reg pack. Is it Clib? They have reg pack, union regs. I just want to know. What is C read me? Union reg, no. P guide, union reg. It won't tell me what the regs are.
What calm union regs? D word regs, word regs, byte regs. Regs. So we have, oh, okay. So we have the registers there. X is word, byte is H. Okay. Um, that actually means, that actually reminds me, AX should be AL. That's a character. Um, what's reg pack? Oh, those are interrupts. Um, how do I get the flags? C flags? Let's say int pack. D word regs. So we should have word regs. All right, so it is C flag, I think. So word regs is X. All right. So R dot X dot C flag. Um, and let's get the Z flag. Just enter Z, I think. So we will return if the Z flag is set. Um, R dot A, R dot B, would it be B? R dot B dot A equals also data C R dot um, X dot C was passed data length R dot X dot D I equals pass a data pass and SI, sorry, SI is passed, DI is red. Then we want to call the function. Um, which will just be a void pointer, I guess. Um, funk. And then we want to flip this around. Um, so we go to the equals. We delete that, put it back. We add our equals, we remove that. And we go back and we delete this equals. And we go to the next line. All right, so that seems fine to me. Let's see if that even compiles. Line 30 is a syntax error? Why? What did I do, bro? Oh, 12. Um, You voted? What for?
line 12, syntax error. All right, I think that's two of those there. Line 14, syntax error. Why is this a syntax error? The state election? Yeah. Ah. Uh, let's put back this function pointer. I'm proud of you, buddy. Cold 30. Okay, so we do need our spunk there. Oh, I shouldn't be putting the star there. I get it. Regs. I think it should include dos.h. Is that what I need? Expression type is unsigned short, must be a pointer or a zero context. All right, let's comment out half of this. Remember B has not been declared in regs. I thought B was for byte. I thought B was for byte, so maybe it should be CX and AL. AL, AX, you can just set AX. Cannot sign a pointer value to arithmetic item. Why? We cast it to int. All right, this code is going to fuck us up hard, I think. Um, integer value may be tr truncated. Remember C. Oh, we did do character. So let's see if this, that shouldn't do anything, but we should say call pass function. Um, let's say we have our struct pass parser data let's uh, um, we'll set the parser data to be dot a parser data dot c equals zero um length equals zero pass uh let's say our input buffer is Hello world, and our output buffer is that land equals size of out, um, pass equals wait, why is read and pass flipped around? I think SI should be read. Yeah. So we're going to read from in and we're going to um, pass to out. 
and we'll just set that to be zero by default. Um, let's just see if that compiles without the call. Nameless decoration, ah, data. All right, so int ret equals call parser data function. And we're just going to make one that says um, nothing. Um, actually, we probably shouldn't be. Um, we'll just do do nothing. Um, let's make this a test. Um, void test knob void. And so what this should do um, pass nothing. We have our character in, we have a character out. And we'll do test not. And now we want to assert red equals zero. We want to assert data dot C equals zero. And we want to assert data dot length equals size of out. Set data dot read equals in. Data dot pass equals out. I think we need to include dot uh, h pass nothing has not been defined so what we're going to do is do pass spunk pass nothing extern undefined symbol so that's when we go back to here and we're going to do our first function that does nothing. So global pass nothing. And the only thing it's going to do is ret. And it says it's undefined. Why? 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 Do I need to extern see that? Oh, it needs to be an underscore. Maybe. No, it still does not return. It does not set the thing. Um, why? Am I not compiling the pass thing? Test pass obs, test pass. Oh, I didn't do pass the obj. I'm not, I'm not that good, am I? Okay, so that still didn't link. Maybe I need to link it in as well there. And maybe I need to extern see it again. Mm. 
Why is this so complicated? All right, let's see if it works. And it hangs. What? We do test knob. Let's step into that. It didn't hit the step button. Run, step into. Face and is F8. Um, let's just view the assembly. Um, because we kind of need to know. So it's setting up our registers. AX is fucking weird. Um, AX is 3832 for some reason. That shouldn't be happening. Um, CX is zero. DINSI seem to be fine. Then it runs call. And if we trace into that. Oh, huh? Oh, this is the call pass function, I think. So let's get to the actual func. Um, AX is still fucked up. Uh, call DX. I have a feeling I've kind of broken something. Not a thing, not a thing. Um, so we might be in the wrong code segment, but this is, that should not be the case. Let's try again. Okay. So we set up our data, go in there, we're in this. All right, let's code assembly. So we're calling DX. And what is in DX? Why it must be our function pointer, perhaps. Let's look at our code. Look at our data registers. So DX is 7220. Um, let's skip over to our pass. And look for our pass nothing. Um, let's do code assembly and pass nothing is at one, two, seven. One, two, six. So, hmm. Okay. What is that DX? Nothing. All right. Let's have another look. Let's simplify this to just pass nothing. The only thing we want to do is pass nothing.
And that hangs too. Okay. Let's just check out our bot code again. So we have our bot.cpp. How does it handle ASM run? Extend C in ASM run. All right. Then if we go to, I think it's state. Where we have ASM run maybe. ASM quit, ASM run. It's global in section text. Perhaps I've, oh, perhaps I've defined this pointer. Oh yeah, I've defined it as a variable. Okay, so it should be um, void pass nothing. Void like that. We take the extern C away. I don't want to have to keep putting that there. All right, let's try this. Undefined symbol. What com extern C? Hmm. Don't see underscore. Pragma orcs C name. Uh, what com C pragma orcs? What com C leading underscore? Ah, I, is there a way to turn this off? Underscore. Maybe I should just assembly call, like, uh, maybe that would work. ASM call do nothing. Incorrectly spelled type name. Maybe it has to be underscore ASM. Pass nothing has not been defined. Maybe I can define it as ASM pass nothing. All 
All right, let's go to the Whatcom documentation. Whatcom C guide. Um, leading underscore. Extern C. Ah, uh, orcs pragma. All right, let's look for a pragma orcs then. Alias names. Is that what I want? Magma orcs. Okay, let's try that. Magma orcs pass nothing, pass nothing. Huh? Oh, I've uncommented that too. Let's get rid of that. Does that need to like be in quotes? Uh, Ragma aux default. So maybe I need to extern see this. I think that's the default one. Main is undefined reference. Um, pragma aux default. So that messes up main, but past nothing still kind of works. So I think we might be on the right track here. All right, alternate names. So we have symbol and we have object name. So we should pragma orcs, pass nothing, pass nothing. Um, Maybe I just need it to be P nothing. Else nothing has not been declared. Um, P nothing, P nothing, 
That will hurt your kidneys, yeah. Cannot overload extern. Well, let's remove the extern then. Ambiguous function. So does it want me to just... The source conversion is type void pragma. Target conversion is void. So do I cast that? Uh, pass spunk, see nothing. Oh shit, did that actually work? Now, what if I do that? Okay, so what if I do this? Move AX5. Okay, that doesn't fail though. It uh, should fail. So let's go here, trace into, pass a data.c, trace into, trace into, move AX. Um, I don't see why we don't have debug info. Um, do we not? have debug info. I'm pretty sure we have PP args. PP args. I guess we just don't have debug stuff for this. Whatever. Um, rent data dot C equals to zero. All right, so data locals. God damn it, why don't I have debug info? I don't understand. Do I need to W make clean? I don't want to do that. I guess we'll have to just do this with assembly then. So trace into, we have our struct parser data. We set the data, we go into here, right, data registers. So we set AX to C, which is zero, CX to length. Um, and that managed to set AX. Setting CX, set AX. It's not what we want. Um, huh? Why did setting CX set AX? All right, setting um, SI sets, also sets AX. DI sets, AX as well. Start a C length. So that also just is setting junk. Return is C, data.c is still zero. Oh, hang on. Um, Should probably set DI for that. Hey, Masaki. I'm 
we're writing some tests because I'm writing a parser now. So that fails. And Um, let's add a dummy assert just to see if these things are firing. Yeah, okay. So this code here might be fucked a little bit. Um, what if we put another regs here? R2. Maybe that'll like refresh it. All right. I think that might have helped. So data.length is not equal to size out. I think that's what we want. Probably not. I think it's still setting the registers wrong. Yeah. So let's search up what com union regs. So X is word regs. What's reg pack? Is that what we want? Reg pack? Is that only for interrupts? So is that only for interrupts? Okay. So how do we set registers? How do we set registers, Kodo? very carefully what com set register in line assembly language uh, okay it's time to do some trash, I guess. Um, I don't think Whatcom can. Hmm. There's int eighty six regs. And then you use the reg pack. Um, let's look at the C guide. They're like an index. No. Okay. This is fine. 
Auxiliary pragmas. So not symbol names. Uh, let's go to 8.28. Oh, what? Okay, I was in the wrong one. So, um, describing calling information. We uh, do the function name, um, segment, yeah, assembly. What? What? Describing argument information. It's kind of what we want. Passing arguments in registers, yes. Does that specify the order? Okay. Um, Forcing arguments into specific registers. All right, but the problem here is the returns. Kind of what I want there. But we need to return stuff. Value struct info. Turning function values in registers. So it's a value register set. Returning structures, registers. What? Structure caller routine. So C structures, maybe not the right thing to do here. Maybe. Um, hmm. We, we have problems, maybe. What com return structure in registers? All right, hang on. What com inline assembly? Do we have the ability to do that? In what com? I know we have the underscore assembly thing. That's not inline though, that's an aux thing. Variables in inline. You don't understand 
or is this only Okay, let's I think I know I think I have a solution here. We will create a function that will take the values of the structure as pointers. So we will do um, pragma orcs pass nothing and it will be int pass nothing character C unsigned short length Character read, character pass. And we will pragma aux this to set these values. Um, Pragma aux equals whatever palm ex. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the Whatcom guide. So let's see, we do pragma orcs arm symbol palm. What's palm? Palm. And then we do reg set. but we need to do inline assembly. So reg set would be AX CX um, SI DI, I think. But we also need the return. And we will return in AX. I think that'll work, kind of. And it doesn't really matter um, what these are actually, we don't need to. Passing arguments to inline functions. That's actually probably what we should be doing. Pass nothing. Okay. So pragma aux, and we're gonna have call pass function equals, um, Shit. We're gonna have to pass these on the stack, I think. Well, okay, so palm, we have our ASM stuff here. Palm. All pass function. And we will just have pass funk funk.
Data dot len, data dot read, data dot pass. There we go. Um, and so we will have this. We can we uh, use symbols for them, labels. What time? Ah, please, Firefox. What com inline assembly? What will we call it? Um, labels. Oh, this page explained it, I guess. I want to use labels. Can I do that? Variables. Oh, so those aren't function arguments, I don't think. All right, this is fine. So we're going to do palm ax, bx, cx, dx, one, two, three, four, five. I think. We, do we have enough registers for this? I need another register. We have the length, we have the read and we have the pass, but we need the pass function. I'm, I've run out of registers. Can I pass using the stack? Oh shit, I have a better idea, I think. Uh, we can just pass the struct parser data. But we will pass a pointer to it. Okay, so parser data is in AX, the end of DOSBot. Yeah. Um, but we also need a spare register. Shit. No, we can push. We can push it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is push AX and loss. We will pop AX. Um, we will also at some point jump. Do we have a register for this? DX, okay. Jump DX and we will, we will put the pass function in DX. That's fine. No, we will call DX. So now what we need to do is start moving stuff into it. Um, move AX. Wait, we can't just pop AX like that, can we? Ah, registers. Why are there so little registers on this platform? Pisses me off. Sorry, I'm getting angry at the computer. Um, we might have to make this a macro. Uh, maybe. Should we make this a macro? I don't know. Let's just try this. So we're going to call DX, but we also need to set up AX with data C. Let's search up for adding. 
how do they pad the, the structs? Dot com struct padding. Padding. Alignment. Let's search up alignment. So we have a struct there. Can I pragma the alignment? Okay, pragma pack. All right. Pragma pack, and what are we doing? Um, So we want to set it to two, I think. Unless that overwrites it. Whoosh. It's okay, we can do this. Pragma pack push. We'll set it to two and we'll do pragma pack pop. I think that'll that'll work. So if we go here, so the size of the member. So the size of the member here, um, oh, where's my code? That's car, that's a pointer, that's a pointer, that's a pointer. And the first one is a byte. So one, alignment. If the member of the structure is an array or structure is by the row X. All right. So size of member gives us the alignment. I think that's added to the struct. So if it's one, then with a push size of two, it gets aligned to two. No, that's always zero. Why? The alignment only happens for um, other things, I guess. This chart is really confusing, actually. Uh, so we have so size of one, always no alignment padding. Size of two, um, if you do one padding, then it'll always be zero padding. Two padding, it'll always be two padding. Four padding, it'll be two padding and four. Eight padding, eight, uh, it'll be four, but then the eight is eight, 16. So it kind of looks like this sets the max padding. 
All right, let's just set it to one then. All right. Ah, shit. All right, hang on a second. Pointers, 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 pointers. We need to move into AX. BX, and we have to have a displacement of zero. BX plus zero. That means we have to put this in BX. Right. And then CX would be BX plus one. Um, SI would be BX plus three. So one, two, three, one plus two is three. And DI would be BX plus five. That seems right to me. Then we call it, and then we just want to move everything back. Like that, AX, CX, SI, DI. And then we want to move into AX, the value of the flag. So we'll move zero. Um, we'll just move it for zero. How do we specify the return value? Where the fuck is zero? Uh, pragma box. And we want to return. How do we return a value? Return values, that was down here. Describing return values, I think. Same value. Can I have an example, please? I think it would be like that, palm X. Let's try going back to this page. Not this page, the inline page. Value EAX, I think. Yeah. Value AX. And we modify CX, SI, and DI. That might actually work. If this works, I will be freaking astounded. All right, let's see the compiler errors. Call three eighteen syntax errors. I probably forgot a slash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty-eight. Did I forget another slash? Yeah, I actually added a slash unnecessarily. Twenty-eight. Modify. Why does that not work? I think end of line, but found that. Oh. 
modify regs value param. So it should be modify that CX SI DI. Invalid register name comma. Oh, yes, no commas there. Well, that actually works, maybe. Let's uh, add a modified DI5 there. Oh, that actually might be working. I'm going to jump into the, the thing. Space trace into, trace into this. Oh, what? Okay, I traced into it and it didn't, uh, I should be in the assembly. All right, D uh, code assembly. So, so BX, all right, D uh, data registers, AX is Eight. Oh shit. Okay, that makes sense. CX is eighty. All right. So I read in um, a word. Eight. So it should be AL. CX is eighty. That's fine. SI is twenty-two. That seems a little bit sus, and DI is CF2. Okay. Let's do data memory at 22. That is correct. All right. This actually looks okay. Um, little surprised by this. Um, okay. So we have our test knob. Um, we can get rid of that. Uh, let's do peak. So we want to move um, AL um, SI and return. So we'll do test peak, right? Peak, peak, and we'll do test peak. Now we also need to watch out for the length. Oh, all these are going to modify the max lengths to read. Or like the length in the buffer, shit. We need to remember that. Um, we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to remember... Length mod. Length mod. Length mod. Um, and length red. What will length red be? We'll have to worry about, um, shit. We have, crap, we have two buffers and two lengths. 
So when we peak, we need to make sure we're reading inbounds. To do check length. Um, when we read, we need to check Um, we need to check pass length, pass read length, check pass length. So we need another, another register. We need another register. Um, we need a register for the length left. So this is the length left in the buffers. Um, so we have AL. Let's do CX. Let's do BX as well. Um, BX can be... Um, length left in parts buffer. CX can be length left in read buffer. That makes sense. I mean, we could also just have it as BX and DX and have CX as something else. And we might have just AX as the scratch register there. AX as input output reg. And then for peak, um, there'll be nothing there. Okay. The BX, CX, um, ZF, whether we failed. All right, so let's go back to our thing here. Car C is going to be um, inside short. Um, arg or in out, I'll just name it in out. So that's AX and this needs to be two, that needs to be four, that needs to be six. Two, four, six. But this should be also be um, len read, len pass. All right, so let's do, we also have to move those. Um, let's put them there. So in out, then we have CX is going to be the length left in the read buffer, which is two. Let's do BX is two, which is going to be the length left in the pass buffer. CX is going to be four. We bump these up. A X B X C X S I D I from zero to that should be A X B X C X two four six eight um so we modify B X C X S I D I. And we can't actually use BX here anymore. We'll have to use BP. If we can. All right. Let's see if that even compiles and runs. Um, C has not been declared. Oh, right, the tests. All right. Let's 
So we have our parser data in out. Um, length pass, length read, size of in, size of out. Or is it the other way around? I think pass. Wait, what? Pass buffer, read buffer, okay. So pass buffer is where we write stuff. Read buffer is DI for some reason. You know what? We're just going to call this read buffer and write buffer. Read buffer, write buffer. There. Because I keep getting confused. Length read, length write, read, write. Um, and that should be the same alignment, really. Um, read, write, SIDI. We have read, write, VX6. Length read, size of in, size of out. Uh, pass equals in, pass equals out. Ret dot dot in out equals zero. Length read equals size of in. Length write equals size of out. All right. W make that. Remember, pass has not been declared. Eek. So, what should peak do? Why is that overloading? Peak. Oh, I have two test peaks? That should be main. What the hell? Legal register modified. All right, so we have some problems. Um, we're not allowed to touch BP. This is a problem. Because we're running out of registers. One, two, three, four, five. So AX, DX is free. Is BP free? It doesn't look like it. What if we change this to ES? The legal use of register. All right. Wait, does that just mean I can't index the base pointer? Wait, what? Uh, what com doesn't let me? All right, a legal register modified. So what if we pass it in BX? Then we pop BX here. We push BX here. We push BP. We pop BP. So hang on, we push, we push BP. Push BP, we pop BP. Um, then we would want to move BP BX and then we would want to move it back here. Move BX BP and then we pop BP. 
Oh shit, we can't do that, can we? Oh no, we can. All right, let's see. And we'll just say that it modifies BP. All right, I think that works. So, let's define what peak does. Peak will read a character and it will check. All right, so peak does the three things. Um, peak cases, case normal. Read from read buffer. Um, decrement read length. Then we will. Um, hang on a second. Lods. What's the lods instruction do? What register does it use? We're doing register allocation. What's up, Kaz? What does it decrement? Does it decrement? No. Okay. Decrement read length. Return. Um, return uh, read. Uh, read car in AX. So that's what we want to do. Um, so let's say we have our buffer, which is um, hello. Um, our out buffer can be uh, I'll just say 16. Let's both make these 16. No. Character out is 16. So what we will do is we will assume that um, test peak normal case normal. We want to find out that the value is actually the character H and that nothing else has been modified. Data dot out zero equals zero. So let's see if this works. Out has not been declared. Huh? Huh? Oh. Test peak has not been declared. Okay, so we have test peak normal. Okay, that fails because it did not return the value. So what we're now going to do is move um, AX, AL um, from the in buffer. And let's see if that fixes the test. Okay, it does. So we have that working. Right. Um, So now we want to read a single character into um, in out into circuit into in out.
So let's add another case. Test peak. Um, what would the what would a failure mode be? Um, none left. So we're going to say that there is actually nothing to read here. And we're going to say that in out is not going to be modified. It's going to be zero. Uh, the length red is going to be um, length red going to be zero. And we're going to assume that ret is one. So if there is no space left, we want to return an error. So um, returns if no space to read. Does that make sense? Let's see if that's the case with our code. Yes, it is. It, it succeeds. And that's because um, I don't have it. I have it always returning. Wait, ret should not be equal to one. Oops. Yeah, ret equals zero. That should be ret equals one. And I uh, didn't run the test. So this is why you have your tests fail first. Um, so you can know if they actually work. Otherwise I would have written my code and assumed it work, would work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we want to set ZF to zero if set ZF to one if BX is zero. Let's see. Um, compare BX zero. Um, return jump zero return. Now this still fails and that's because we're not actually returning the zero flag. Um, so how do we get the zero flag in assembly? That should be easy. Um, uh, 8086 get zero flag. I could do a branch, but I want to see if there's a way to do it without branching. We also need to be able to set the zero flag. Ooh, this is actually a tricky one. Um, we need to be able to set the zero flag. I just realized that. So fail equals zero because the zero flag doesn't get cleared each time. We need to make sure that doesn't affect things. Or 
we shall promise ourselves to clear the zero flag. Uh, but yeah, we need to. Eighty eighty six uh reader zero flag into register. We don't have labels, so I don't know if we can jump. Oh shit. I guess we could read the flag. How do we flag? Push F, pop F. Alright. Push F, pop F, that's fucking weird. Pop AX, and then we're going to end AX with 400. I think that would work. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Let's see if this works. I don't want to change too many things at once. No space. Why? Red equals one. So it's not setting the flag. We push the flags. Does pop set the flags? Int ret, um, I think it's not setting it. All right, um, let's just make sure that it is setting the flag. So the zero flag should be set if we do um, test AX AX, I think. And then we will just move that. Oh, we don't have to move that. So test AX AX if ERP. Let's see. We have our flags. X86. X86 set zero flag. You're going to set it to one comp AX AX. Zor AX AX. Let's try that. Is the carry flag not being set? Okay, hang on a second. We're gonna have to, oh no, not bot. So let's jump into this. In out, read. 
data uh, registers, code assembly. So we're going to watch the Z flag. It's set to one. Still set to one. We push the flags. We pop the flags. And we end the flags and that doesn't work. Why is that? Did I add an extra zero? Yeah, it's just 40. I did 400. All right. So we now have the first test failing properly. So we're going to move that back and we're going to do compare BX BX. It will jump if it's zero. Is it test? Should we be testing it? Test peak normal is failing still. No space is failing now, so. Jump not zero, what, what is happening? Oh, it must, they must have both been like that. All right. So we want to test if a register is zero. So compare BX zero. And if it's zero, is there a compare instruction for X86 that will set zero? Is it set to zero flag? Yeah, it should. It should be fine. Okay, so no space is not returning one. Let's double check this. So read equals zero. And return is not that. What if we set right? What if these are mixed up? Nope. All right, time to do some debugging. Let's watch our registers. Let's, I guess, step into this code assembly. F8, 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 we call DX. All right, so BX is zero, we compare it, that sets it to one. And we jump if it's a zero to return, we return. The zero flag is still set. AX is, oh shit, all right. We need to shift it, all right. We need to shift it right. So how many bytes is, how many bits? Byte and three, here I'm 40, what's that? I guess that's 64. No. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's eight, maybe? Eight, seven, six. Yeah, okay. So we have to sh shift right. 
shift right. So shift right AX six. Oh boy. Invalid instruction with current CPU setting. What? What do you mean? Should be SAR. Invalid instruction. Bro, I just want my bit. All right, code. What com? Uh, no, it would be Intel. Just tell me how to shift my shit. Rotate right. Shift right. Can I only shift by shift logical right? Can I only shift by a smaller amount of bits? Shift right by one. Two. Four. So we can only shift by one. All right. Move BX six. Shift right AX BX. Valid instruction up. Single bit register. I can only shift by a single bit. Eighty eighty six shift right. A shift arithmetic right. So maybe we need to do. Right, AX CL. Does it need to go in C CL? BL? Maybe it needs to, maybe it needs to be five or something. Maybe it needs to be seven. Oh, that works maybe? No, I didn't run it. All right, so this is fine. We're just going to go test pause. Gonna step into this. We're going to go code uh, data registers code assembly. We're just going to head on down here. Why are people evil and mean? I don't know. 
Why? Um, why is it using AL? I guess we found an assembler bug where it's writing CL, whatever, who cares? It's fine. Oh, uh, finally, that yeah, kind of works. Um, So one problem we have here is that um, hmm, we need to also, this is tricky because we want to run the thing twice and then check that passing in the zero flag doesn't affect it. Um, I mean, we could just also trust that it doesn't. Um, all right, let's try refactoring some of this. So we have our character in, character out, pass the data. Um, we want to we need to refactor this a bit so that only the stuff that we care about is tested here, I guess. We want to check that things aren't modified. I don't know how to do that though. Um, maybe we just need to make it a bit less verbose. Hmm. Let's not worry about it for now. So we have a working peak. Um, we also need read. Um, and read does the same thing, but we also will quit if um, there's nothing left in CX. And what we want to do, oh no, we're not touching CX. Uh, we want to sub BX one. And so for our cases here, we want to do test read and it's gonna be exactly the same. Actually, I shouldn't be editing this code yet. I'm sorry. We'll just name it. Read. Probably gonna fuck things up, but okay. Um, test box read, read. Test read normal. And test read, no space. Um, and then we find peak. Decrementing len read. So what will this actually be? Um, let's actually just write jump read, uh, jump peak for now.
undefined symbol read. Right. Let's go back to our code. Um, it says undefined symbol read, which is as far as I can tell, fucking wrong. Oh, it's not. My bad. Okay, now what we're going to do is have it so we call peak. Um, if it's on a failure, we return. Um, and then we decrement BX. Uh, we probably shouldn't call peak. Um, there we go. So it's the same thing, but we just decrement BX by one. And so what we should expect is that the tests will now fail. And once again, don't do this. I'm doing it backwards. Um, and so that should be size of in minus one. All right, so that works. We have our read function now. Um, do we? This should be copying it to. No, read just consumes it. Yeah. So next, we're going to have our expect. Whatever, we can call peak here. This is our world. So let's add expect. So we call peak. Uh, if it's returning, then we compare All right, we need to use a temporary register here then. For the character buffer. Hmm. So this is kind of like calling peak, but then we want to call um, expect. Um, let's just use DX. Actually, it might just be better to just copy and paste this so we can allocate registers properly. Do that. So we do mob that, mob AL, compare, um, mob DL, compare AL, DL. Um, and what do we want to return? I guess we want to return if they're the same. Yeah, we don't want to set the Z flag. Maybe we should set the carry flag. All right, hang on, Intel clear flags register. Clear carry flag. Um, 
Wait, are there other flags? Operations? Probably, right? Push flags, store AH into flags. I don't know why you can just load shit into your flags. That's fine. Now we could probably actually use this um, load AH with flags. Um, let's try that in a second. Lap. Let's just check back here. Lap. Push flags, pop flags. All right. Um, let's see, clear flags or set flags. Clear carry, set carry. Clear direction, set direction. Hmm. Can we jump based on carry? We can jump based on overflow. Jump less. What's SF? S flag? Yeah, I think we would have to use carry flag here. Or overflow flag. That carry flag. Oh, we can just do that. Um, yeah, so we want to set carry flag. God, this is becoming a bit of a nightmare, but this is okay. Do we have to really do it that way? How about expect just returns zero or one? Let's just do that. We um, subtract it. Say that we subtract um, AL and DL. Um, let's say we only use AL for the input and output anyway. Or did we use that for something else? What was I going to use it for? No, we'll use AL. Oh, shit, we'll use AX, but we have to clear, um, clear AX upper. This sub, clear AX upper. Hmm. Oh, but if we do the compare there, we would require people to do a compare themselves. Um, hmm. You know, we might actually just be able to dump expect. That's just a reading and then comparing, right? We could make that a macro perhaps. Um, and then we have pass. Yep. 
Let's add pause. Let's call it copy. Why not? So we're going to compare BX zero and we're going to compare DX zero. No, we're just going to make it the same as read at the moment while we do our tests. So we're going to do test copy. Copies from read to write, decrementing both lanes. So test copy normal. And test copy no space in. No space read. So let's see if that works. Oh, that should be read there. That should be copy. Enable alone on a line without a colon might be an error. Yes, that is an error. Thank you, Nazem. Test space, no copy read. Test read, test. Okay, that should be kept test copy. Let's do test pause. Test peak is failing. Huh? I think we need to reset the carry uh, the Z flag. Um, when we call each. Or AX negative one. So let's put that at the top of all of these. Oh wait, that, does that modify it? Um, let's try doing test. Um, Yes, uh, SI, SI. Let's see if that helps. No, that still failed. What the hell? And I shouldn't need to because I'm doing comparisons. Why is my peak failing? What the heck? 
What the heck, Shrek? Let's not do the copy. Test peak underscore normal is now long, no longer working. Um, did I modify it? Let's put the code. Oh, is it back with? Okay, I think I think I know what's happening. Um, is it because I messed with the flags here? Um, op, uh, push F, op AX. Let's try that. All right. So let's test that the copy works. All behaves as peak. So now what we want to do is we want to test that out one is equal to H. And the written data is also less one. Let's compile that and see that it fails. Right, so copy now. Um, remove these test things, we don't need those. We're doing compares in the first place. All right, so when we copy, we want to decrement BX and decrement CX. And we also want to I think do LODs. Where's the um, x86 string instruction copy? Should we use the string instruction? Oh, that's gonna that's gonna decrement the pointer. Oh shit! This isn't incrementing the pointers either, right? Move AL, move. Could we just drop the length things and use null termination? Hmm. Okay, let's see if this fixes it. Did I write out one? Why? I feel like we should just go with null termination. Um, but I'm not sure. So when we go to the read here, we should actually have incremented this. And same for this. So the next read will be different data. So that should be ink SI. Well, let's try it log SI. All right, um, and then we're going to add another test to make sure that, not another test, we're going to check that right is also incremented. We'll also check that out one is still zero.
Oh, it should have been Lodsby, I think. Let's see, does this work? No, because I haven't incremented DI. All right, now let's try doing a copy instruction. Let's check here, mods. Does this not have, okay, lods, stars, mobs. Okay, so this should be lods, mobs, mobs B, lods B. And let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. Test copy normal. Says that data in out is not. Oh shit, no, it shouldn't be that. There should be no in out, it should be zero. In fact, test read should be zero too. Oh uh, no, it should be. Yeah, we shouldn't affect what's in AX. Although I think we should, no, no, it's a good idea if we do actually read it in. Um, because that way we can use it to compare stuff. That's weird. I thought mobs would, uh, Mobs does, mobs does not affect any registers. That's interesting to know. All right. So we have our shit. Um, global read. Um, calling convention, low level character based. Yeah, we have read peak copy. Um, we also haven't checked no space read, and we also need to no space write check. So is it succeeding if I don't check? Oh. That's correct, I didn't test for that. Yay! Okay, so now we have our essentials. Um, let's see. What we're going to do next is write, um, password. So 
So this will return a word um, up until a space. Copy word. And so this is going to be a bit more complicated. I might just go use the bathroom real quick. If that's okay, friends. Be right back. Oh, I didn't drink my tea and now it's cold. Oh, damn it. Okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. So I'm gonna be right back and we're gonna start writing some high level passing stuff. See you in a second. All right, we're back. It's happening. Um, is my internet dying? What is happening with Twitch? Um, I should be streaming right now. Yeah, I'm streaming. Um, don't know why Kaz is messaging me. I'm streaming. Streaming, mom, don't come in. All right, so we have the test copy. So now we're gonna do test copy word, and this is the success case. Um, I've made the mistake of moving my keyboard. Okay, that's good. No, it's not good. Okay, that'll have to do. So now we're gonna do copies a word from read to write. So, this is hopefully where things start to pay off. So test copy word normal, um, hello world, or hello, hello, I guess, hello world. Data dot read, data dot write, data dot read, data in. Copy word, copy word. And so what we want our thing to do is we want um, in out to be, I guess, space. In out is kind of a scratch register or whatever. Um, length red needs to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. And length written needs to be five. And then we need to plus five, plus five, and out one equals. Um, H E. I don't know how to do a mem. I, I think it's string copy. String compare. Assert string compare. Hello. Out equals zero. Let's see if that works. It won't work, but. Let's just see what happens. Could be cool. So we're not getting that character of space. Um, we're not going to worry about that for now. 
let's start implementing this. So copy word consists of a loop where we peek um, and then we will compare um, AX with space, AL with space and we will jump to return if um, it is a space. Otherwise, we will um, copy, we will um, copy, and then they will jump back to copy word. And looks like we've hit an infinite loop, my friend. It's not what we want. Let's try and read this first. So when we call copy, we call peak. We will jump C, return. If copy fails, we will return. Otherwise, we will just jump. Um, call peak, we compare AL with the space. Yeah, that should be fine. I don't see any immediate issues with this code. Um, let's do WD test pars. Um, what? Test pars? Ret equals zero. So return is equaling one. Is this because we're running out of space? What is happening here? Um, let's go into this copy word. So we have our in and we're going to go to data. Um, code, code, um, assembly, space, 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 F8. So let's go data registers. We call peak and we get 48, which is H. Um, That should probably be jump equals actually. Shit. Is that it? Nope, I didn't think so. Okay. Wait, is the zero flag the same as the e? No, right, that's fine. Although this should be a Jay-Z return. Step into this. Step into this. Let's look at data registers. 48, copy it. Um, BX has zero one in it. We copy the word, peak. BX has zero in it. And then we run out of space. Wait, what? Are my tests wrong? I think they are. Size of <sighs> All right, yeah. That should be string length in.
Okay. All right. That still fails, but that's fine. Oh, did my stream restart? God, my internet really must have died. Um, all right, let's go. I wonder why it died. Is Twitch trying to keep the DOS industry down? No, I wouldn't end the stream without saying so. All right, data registers. So we have B length, we call peak, we compare it, it's not equal, then we don't return, then we copy it, then we jump, then we return. Oh shit. We found a problem. The equal flag is equivalent to the zero flag, <laughs> which means when we do copy word, If we compare and then return, we would have to set the flag up. Hmm. So this is an issue with, I guess, loops or Any kind of comparison? Because the parser is using ZF. <laughs> but we are also using ZF for comparisons. So what can we do about this? Uh, well, <coughs> Perhaps we could use the carry flag. Hmm. Um, X eighty six, eighty six status flags. So what flags do we have? We have the zero flag. Hmm. All right, we're going to have to reserve the carry flag instead. Um, set carry, clear carry, CLC, STC. All right, time to refactor. Um, so what we're going to do here is change this to clear carry, set sorry, x86, get carry fag. X86 read carry flag. ADC. Oh, we can just push. Um, okay. So check if carry flag is set. 
just go back to the flag register and see which one it is. So carry flag should be one, um, which actually solves another problem because we don't need to shift it. One, we don't shift it. All right, um, okay. And so now we're gonna have a ton of errors, but don't worry, this is gonna be fine. Because, um, uh, hmm. We're going to do error and we're going to do set carry flag or whatever it's called set carry and this is going to be clear carry right Very wet. Very. Error. Error. And that should. Now we will do jump carry. Um, so we want to pass through errors. Jump carry return. I think we can just do jump carry return and jump carry return and that should pass the carry flag through and propagate it up. All right, let's try this. ZF, ZF, carry flag. I lose my DOS box. Yeah. All right. Let's try this. All right. That suspiciously works. Let's remove the clear flag there. Uh, let's remove the set flag roller and see if that stops working. All right, so I'm gonna assume that works now. So we've solved that issue and now we have copy word and copy word works. Um, so let's go copy word. What if copy word has, um, we're going to have to test copy word EOF maybe. Um, like what are we going to do if we have a copy word, uh, not no space, um, Space, we're just going to call this space. Copy is nothing as we start with a space. And we're going to just have that be all default values. And we'll see if that works. Copy word space. We also need to figure out what happens if there's um, if there's an end of thing. Copy word is not being declared. Oh shit! I just overwrote copy word. 
No. Subscript on non array. Yeah, that makes sense. Out zero should be zero. All right, so copy word space. So we need to also decide what happens if copy word peaks and peak fails. I mean, I guess that's good. It's just that like, um, I guess our constraint can be that we should have null termination. So we're going to have copy word fail if we run out of um, the end of the buffer. And that's just going to be EOF. What would in and out be then? I guess it would be O. All right, so copy word EUF works. So now we have copy word. And we have skip space, I think. Oh, copy word is also supposed to tell you how long the word is, I guess. Should it? Does that matter? I don't think so. You can calculate that. The caller can calculate it. And then we will have skip space. Um, and what skip space will do is it will um, read spaces until no more. So if it's a space, then it will peak it. We compare if it is. And if it is not a space, it will return. Otherwise it will call read. And then also fail if that happens. So let's add the tests for it, even though I just wrote it. Um, I think we're getting to the point where I don't think I want to do too much testing after this. We'll just start writing the um, actual thing, if that makes sense. I know that's kind of trashy, but um, we're going to do test skip space. Um, this is going to copy nothing. One, two, three, four, five. 
So this is one, two, three, four, and then five. Um, wait, did I just modify test copy word, test copy word? I didn't copy it. Ah. This is why things are getting a bit complicated. So, skip space. One, two, three, four, so H E L L O. When we skip space, the character should be W. The length read, the length written should be size of out out but the length red should be five or so and then out should not be written skips spaces when reading. So let's do skip space normal. Um, we'll just uh, and, uh, if these out. And let's double you make that. Test pause. So the character um, in AX is not W. That's weird. It should be because it would be peaking that, right? You would compare it. Hmm. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think that would be, let's just turn that down a bit, five spaces. Um, let's remove that a certain, just see if the, the length is working. It's not. Why not? Skip space calls peak. It compares it with a space. And if it's not a space, it returns. Otherwise, it reads. And then it needs to jump to skip space. That actually solves that. All right. Um, so now we're going to do uh, what's the EOF thing? We don't need to test the EOF because we know what happens there? Um, test copy word space. And this should be just no space. Skips nothing. Done. Hello world. And it should be equal to H. Let's skip space. No space. All right. 
Now it's time to clean up this code a bit. So when we have our high level stuff here, we have our low level stuff that we're not going to try and deal with, but our high level stuff just calls the low level stuff amidst other stuff. So we're going to try and add some macros. So we're going to define, I want to define two lines though. Multi-line macros. So we're going to call this um, macro do pass. And then what it will do is it will call one and jump to return if that fails. End macro. And then we can just do do pass. Do pass eek. and then we will do pass read. And let's see if that helps. All right, then we will have Um, do expect, um, and then we will do pair al space, and then we will jump not equal dot return. Do expect space like that. And we also want to kind of create a wrapper for our pass functions. So do expect is not an error though. Do expect would be, wait, do we have anything called pass? We can just do, no. So do expect is, Yeah, do expect returns um, equal. Hmm. Did I have begin proc? I know it has end proc. Okay. So macro um and parser awesome. so let's dump this up here
So this thing's going to be similar. This will be do pass ik do expect space do pass copy do um, actually we can just do uh, we'll do do copy do peak and then we'll just define do peak as in do pass peak and we'll do that with copy and read. And we'll change that here. Then we, if we do a peak, we expect that and we copy. And then we um, jump back to copy word and we do pass end. I have changed the behavior of copy word. So let's see, we peak, expect. Um, that should be do expect not. Right, that should be fine. So we peak, you know, we should just get rid of these expect things. Um, although, that should work. Oh. Expect not would compare it and if it's not equal, it returns. Oh, maybe I need to do it the other way around. All right, that's weird. All right, put some macros there. So let's see how we would write, say, um, pass message. We would write pass tags. So we go here. Pass tags would be, we would do expect at. We would push um and di with the tags buffer and cx with the tags buffer length the di and cx is the right buffer and we pop di and we pop cx ah shit. um hmm, if we return i guess we will just have to pop Pop it there, and we'll do it at the start there. There we go. So we do expect. And 
that. Then we go um, call password, I guess. Do pass password. Deep read copy. Yeah, so do pass password. Ah, that's where we need the, the length. All right. Uh, and that would jump if it failed. Um, and then we want to do pass skip space. So that would be kind of what we expect pass tag to be. The return there with red. Remove that macro because we're not using it. So this is going to be what our pass code kind of looks like. Um, So we do expect we um we're going to have to have a macro for swapping buffers um after we figure out how to do that so do expect um and we will then just do read skip the at Let's do to do expect is more of a look ahead. Hmm. So that would be do peak, do expect, do read. Then we pass the word, that would be copy word. Then we want to um, I guess put in a register the old length or something like that. That's backwards. So I think with this system, we shall be able to finally do parser. Um, the only issue is that we need to kind of um, do set buffer, do set write tags buffer, tags buffer, land max. Yeah, we won't worry about that for now. Um, the bigger problem is that, um, copy word needs to return length copied, written, I suppose. Um, but is that, should it be there? Perhaps we should be, um, wrapping it. Oh, I know what a good idea would be. We push the, we subtract um, CX from the length. So subtract CX from length. And then we pop it back. And so CX would start as max. We do our passing. Yeah, 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 yeah. All 
All right, so I'm actually pretty pleased with how this is going, but because this has taken four hours, I'm going to quit quit streaming while I'm ahead. And you can probably hear my heater. All right, um, see you later, everyone. I don't know if we have anyone to raid, let's check. No one's on, okay, uh, see ya.